Good morning and happy Sabbath to all who are joining us here live and uh, those who are joining us online. Happy Sabbath to you as well. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice to be glad in it. Amen. We are just so uh, grateful for the opportunity that we have to worship him in the beauty of his holiness. And uh, it's my privilege as uh, the pastor of this church. My name is Gresford Thomas to uh, welcome you and to thank you so much for choosing to be with us today. I just have a couple of announcements to, uh, to make, and then we'll have our uh, invocation, our opening prayer, and then we'll have our worship service. The first is uh, today at uh, 1.30. We'll be having a, a special project, a special community project. We are uh, partnering with another church, another um, church of another d denomination, which is, uh, which is great. Uh, they'll be meeting in our fellowship hall at 1.30 today, and we'll be putting together hygiene kits for the, for the homeless. So these are for the homeless that will be uh, distributed to them at a later date, but we have 750 kits to put together. So uh, there will be people coming together from uh, our congregation and their congregation. And if you'd like to be involved, um, whether you're watching or whether you're here, uh, please join us here at the Fellowship Hall, 1.30 today. We'll be going forward with that. You are welcome to, to, uh, to join us and be with us. It's a, it's a worthy project, and we're um, just so grateful to be able to be involved in that. The next is uh, beginning this Wednesday. We're going to be starting, again, another book, our uh, SISTAC, or Concord International Assembly of Venice Church, our book club. And we're going to be looking at this book. It's called Enjoying Your Bible. And it's by John Brunt, Finding Delight in the Word. Uh, I hope some of you have had the opportunity to purchase it at this time. I've, I've gotten some uh, calls and requests to be part of it. We'll be doing it on Zoom, so we won't be meeting in person. But what we'll be doing is we, we'll be learning how to enjoy the Word of God by learning more about the Word of God. You know, sometimes you open up the Bible and you wonder, uh, why are we reading this about the minor? Why are these minor prophets here? Why are these major prophets here? These Revelation, Daniel, uh, Leviticus, how does it all come together? Well, this book goes through every section of the Bible, and it also has some tips on how to study the Bible more effectively. And what's beautiful about this book is that there are, uh, at the end of every chapter, there are exercises that you can go through individually that will help you in your growth of learning how to, to read and study the Bible. And there are also group activities that we'll be going through as a group as we come together where we can really learn how to um, engage the Word of God as a church family. I'm really excited about the opportunity to be able to do that. And you'll see here that the Zoom ID is in the bulletin. However, the uh, password, I've, uh, please email me or uh, text me. My phone number and my, my um, email address are in the bulletin. Uh, they'll also be provided. Uh, in, in other uh, venues as well, please contact me or um, for those of you who are uh, watching, just call the church number and uh, you'll, you'll get me. <laughs> and so we'll have an opportunity to be able to read the Word of God together. I am so looking forward to this, uh, reading this book. Again, it's called Enjoying Your Bible, Finding the Light in the Word of God. Next, I wanted to announce is that we do have some activities that happen also during the week, some studies that are going on. We have a prayer meeting on Thursday evenings. We meet every Thursday. We're going through the book, 40 Days, uh, Prayers and Devotions to Prepare for the Second Coming. Um, it's book two, and we go through that book together, and then we seek the Lord in prayer together as a church family. So I'd like to invite you, if you want to join, the, uh, the Zoom information is there. Uh, you could see myself, or you could see uh, uh, Jerry Brown, and you could also see uh, Ann Kumar, who's out front, to be able to get more information about our prayer meeting. And finally, it um, started a couple weeks ago, but there was a great controversy study that's going on every Friday at 6.30 p.m., uh, we're, we're going through uh, the great controversy. There's a Zoom ID there as well. Um, that's a beautiful, that's a wonderful book. And uh, with the times we're living in today, it's nice to be able to read that together. So if you'd like to uh, join in that, that, there's the opportunity for that as well. So uh, at all the other announcements, I invite you to go ahead and pick up your bulletin and read. Uh, such as our pantry, which happens every, uh, every first and third Sabbath, and uh, other announcements and things that we have going on. So as you can see, we are a very um, active church through this uh, pandemic, and we're looking forward to uh, continuing to, to grow and to flourish as we move forward and uh, expand our 
um, territory by presenting the name of Jesus to all in our community. Let's have a word of prayer as we begin our worship service. Father in heaven, what a joy it is today to come together to worship you, to lift up the name of Jesus. Lord, as we do so, we pray that um, our praise, whether it be in song, whether it be through the reading of the word, through the spoken word, we pray that our praise be to your honor and glory. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would come and you would uh, send your angels to come and worship with us. May the very courts of heaven be open to everything that happens here. Bless those who are here. Bless those who are on their way. Bless those who are watching us online as well. May everything that happens be for your honor and glory. That is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church family. Let's stand for the first hymnal, please. I love to tell the story of unseen things above. Of Jesus and His glory, of Jesus and His love. I love to tell the story, because I know it is true. It satisfies my longing, as nothing else can do. I love to tell the story, twill be my theme in glory, to tell the old, old story of Jesus and His love. I love to tell the story, more wonderful it seems, then all the golden fancies of all our golden dreams. I love to tell the story, it did so much for me. And that is just the reason I tell it now to thee. I love to tell the story, the things of mine and glory, to tell the old, old story of Jesus and His love. I love to tell the story, it is pleasant to repeat. What seems each time I tell it, more wonderfully sweet. The telling of the story, to think the Lord's own theme, and every time I say, God's unholy word. I love to tell the story, twill be my theme in glory, to tell the old, old glory of Jesus and his love. You may be seated.
Hello. Happy Sabbath. Let us uh, approach the Lord in prayer. We thank you, Lord God, almighty, all wise, all powerful. We seek you. We come to you because Jesus told us that we could approach your throne. And we thank you for listening to us and caring for us. We, we know that you take charge of this universe. You keep it in perfect harmony. You created a beautiful planet here for us, something that would give us life and beauty. Uh, we wish that we had kept it in a beautiful way. We have seen all of the devastation. Jesus told us there would be wars and rumors of wars, and we are witnessing all of that. We ask for your Holy Spirit to uh, lead us in the right way, to empower us to keep the commandments, your commandments and your statutes, um, to, to show us how to be peaceable, to remind us that we are to be peacekeepers and peacemakers. And um, in, in, as we look at the devastation in the, in the war zone, and we look at all the people who are fleeing in fear and all the people who have died, we ask for your protection in the war zone uh, for the soldiers and uh, the civilians, um, for also for the the people who have opened their homes and hospitality uh, in the neighboring countries, and even for those who have volunteering <laughs> to go to the war zone. Uh, we need your wisdom uh, at this time because we look at what we have done and we do not know that we how to lead right. Um, we, we ask for your forgiveness for uh, any way that we may have contributed to the scenario, um, any thoughts or actions in, in our own hearts that really um, we need to repent of. We thank you for your blessings. You've given us sunshine today, and we always are thankful for the rain that you give us because we definitely need it in our, our drought. Uh, we, we've got um, economic problems. We've got serious inflation. And we're asking for your wisdom um, on how to uh, keep that under control. We ask that you magnify our, multiply our resources so that we can share with others, even during these uh, uh, economic um, troubles. Um, we ask for your strength. We, we thank you for uh, the faith of Jesus, and uh, uh, we ask for renewed faith for ourselves. For those of us who uh, have uh, family members or church members or know of people in our community who are uh, physically ill, uh, a serious health problems or cancer or uh, other compromises for their health and they are afraid, we ask for a blessing on them. And we also ask for uh, spiritual health, that uh, those who um, whose faith is weak or who have still not come into a relationship with uh, and to believe that Jesus' testimony is true, we ask that you give a special word to them now so that they will uh, um, come into a relationship and be saved. And we thank you for uh, calling us your children. So we approach your throne knowing that uh, Jesus has opened the way. He has shown us the way. And so we, um, we, we, we thank you for what you have given us. Let us pray. We, we ask that your kingdom come and your will be done. And we ask that it come as soon as possible. Prepare us for the ways of the tribulations. 
I will read now the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Uh, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be that, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Amen. Special thank you to Pat and all of our participants who are, who have uh, taken time out to, to be involved in our in our worship experience. Uh, it is something that uh, we do not um, take for granted here. We're just so thankful for what they do, what they have uh, done, and how they have taken time out to, to plan and come together and, and do that. Um, I, I'm very grateful for that. We are continuing with our sermon series on the Ten Commandments. Again, I, I have chosen to name it the Ten Commitments, understanding God through the Ten Commandments, because as I've looked through the Ten Commandments and as we've gone through and studied, one thing that I have noted is that the Ten Commandments are, are not just a list of do's and don'ts from God. Instead, the Ten Commandments are a description of God's character and how God is committed to loving us and to being with us through our life situations. The Ten Commandments are ten affirmations of who God is and how he relates to humanity. If you want to understand more about God, if you want to understand more of, of um, how he feels about us, we need only, we look no, have to look no further, I should say, than the Ten Commandments. But too many times we look at the Ten Commandments as, as just things that we should do or, or not do, ways that we could stay in God's good graces or, or not. But God gave them to the children of Israel for more than that reason. The Ten Commandments are ten ways for us to know that we have accepted the promise of the love of God that he has given to us through the person of Jesus Christ. Now today we're going to continue on and we're going to be looking at the fifth commandment, the fifth commandment. And the title of the message today, this may seem like a strange title, but uh, bear with me for a moment. It's called The Bridge, The Bridge. And the reason is that this commandment, this fifth commandment, it serves as a bridge between two sections of God's law. We've now we've seen in the past, from looking at commandments one through four, of how God is committed to us and through acknowledging him as creator and redeemer. If we look at all of the commandments, basically we're looking at him, or all the commandments I should say, one through four, what we're doing is we're looking at God from the perspective of him being our creator and our redeemer. It starts off by saying you shall, you know, you shall have no other gods, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not take no graven images. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day. These all have to do with acknowledging who God is. He is our creator. He is sovereign over us. He is also our redeemer, the one who has pulled us out of slavery to sin and pulled us into relationship with Jesus Christ. But now we, we, we're going to a point where we're going to move into this how the commandments relate to not just us and God, but us and God and other people starts to get a little more complex here because relationships can be messy. So today, today we're going to look at the fifth commandment, the commandment with a promise, the commandment that says that we should honor our mother and our father. 
But before we go any further into this, please bow your heads with me for a word of prayer. Father, I pray that you would open my lips so my, my mouth may declare your glory. May the words that we speak at this time, may they be seasoned with your love and grace. Lord, it is my prayer in Jesus' name that everything that is done here be for your honor and glory. Everything that is said will allow the name of Jesus to be lifted up. This is my humble prayer in his name. Amen and amen. The bridge. We're looking at the fifth commandment, which serves as a bridge between the two sections of God's law. You know, it's interesting because this is not just something that, that could be observed. This is something that we can actually see, get an allusion to in Scripture. I want to take a look first at this text of Scripture. And I'm going to be looking at uh, primarily four texts of Scripture today that are focused on the, the fifth commandment. Honor your father and your mother. We're going to be looking at different aspects of that commandment through the lens of these scriptures. So the first one is found here in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 3. Leviticus 19, verse 3. Here's what it says. Every one of you shall revere his mother and his father. Sounds familiar, like the, like the uh, fifth commandment. And then it says, and keep my Sabbaths I am the Lord, your God. At first it may seem odd that we're looking at this uh, commandment about revering uh, mother and father, and then afterward he's talking about the Sabbath. Why, why would these be put together? And the reason is, if we look at the Ten Commandments, we see that the fourth commandment is to remember the Sabbath day. And, and then he goes right into honor your father and your mother. There is a bridge that is attaching the first four commandments, specifically the Sabbath commandment, to this fifth commandment, which is honor your father and your mother. Last week we talked about the Sabbath commandment in detail and, and what we establish about the Sabbath is that the Sabbath is, yes, it's a, it's a day of rest, but it's also a, a, a recognition of God as creator. It shows a, a, a separation of time. The, the, the title of the message, if you remember, was an oasis in time. It's a place in time that we have been set apart to meet God. We talked about the fact that when he created, he, he spent the first three days cre creating spaces. He created the, the sky, he created the land, he created the sea. But then he did on the, the last uh, three days the, of creation, he created what goes into those spaces. He created the birds of the air. He created the land animals. And he created the sea animals as well. All of these things came together to create something that was, that was uh, a, a unified creation. So what we see here is happening on the first uh, six days of creation, a space and something to go within the space. But then on the seventh day, he did the same thing, but he did it all in one day. He created the Sabbath, and what was to be contained within the Sabbath was this aspect of rest or stopping. So the space is the Sabbath. It's, it's an oasis in time, but within that time, we're invited to rest in the work of another. So here in Leviticus 19.3, what's happening here is he's telling them to remember to keep the Sabbath, but he's also intertwining that with the aspect of revering or, or honoring, which we're going to take a look at in a moment, mother and father. And the reason is, as you take these commandments and look at this aspect of rest, we see that there is an, there's something that happens in society when we take seriously this command to honor our parents. Just as God is the creator of the world, our parents, mother and father, are creator of us as children. And we see that when, when God put that together, he is asking us to, to remember 
that he is creator, but also to remember, okay, I'm going to bridge you into this next relationship, relationships with humanity, and we're going to start with the most important relationship, and that is of your parents, for without them you would not be here. So let's go to the commandment now and look, in, look at exactly what he says. In Exodus chapter 20, we're looking at verse 12, Exodus 20, verse 12. This is the fifth commandment. And I want to look at it not just here in Exodus, but also in Deuteronomy. Because remember, the Ten Commandments are not just in one place in Scripture. I was always taught growing up to look at Exodus 20, but we also find a retelling of the Ten Commandments in Deuteronomy chapter 5. In Exodus 20, is the original giving of the Ten Commandments when, when God spoke them to the people. In Deuteronomy chapter 5, it's a retelling from Moses as he was teaching the people. He's retelling the people that some of them were not there at Mount Sinai. He's reminding them of how they are to relate to God and to one another. So let's take a look first at ex Exodus 20, verse 12, to understand what it is exactly that God desires for us to know and understand. It says, Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. This commandment is unique because it doesn't just give a, something you must do, but it also gives a result of doing what God is asking you to do. Honor your father and your mother, and the result of it is that your days may be long upon the land. We're going to look at a moment what that means, but to, right now I want to focus on this word honor. What does this word honor mean? Notice he, he didn't say obey. And, and in fact, when we look at Ephesians, we're going to see that he has to, that the apostle Paul, when he writes it, he has to start with, listen children, you need to obey your parents. And then he goes into honor. So obey and honor are two different actions. So in order to understand what this commandment is saying, because it's easy to look at it and say, okay, honor your parents. Okay, children, you need to obey your parents. But what about when you get old, like me, and you have your parents? How, how do you honor your parents? How is this honor done? What, is, what does it mean in Scripture? Well, this word honor has a specific meaning. In fact, we see that it means certain things. It means in, in the Hebrew, the word for honor means to be heavy, to be hard, to be burdensome. That's an odd meaning. But in the, in the, uh, in, in the Greek, it, it has a little different meaning. It means to set the value of. It means to hold something in esteem. So if we take these two definitions and, 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 and kind of imagine what the people were understanding when they heard these words, specifically now we're looking at Exodus chapter 20, what we can see is that this word honor means that when you look at your parents, you're supposed to take within you this, this heaviness of, of feeling as far as how you treat them and how you look towards them. As you grow older and grow independent and, and, and your, your parents are, are growing older as well, you're, you're still to be there. You have that heaviness of heart for them is, is still to be there for them. And the reason is, as you honor your parents, as you honor the one that is, that is there, that brought you into the world, it, it also leads to an honor and remembrance of the one who created all things. But if we can't honor the ones that are, that are right there in front of us and, and who, were, who were there and brought us into the world, how can we even think to honor the Creator? If you say you love me, but you say you hate your brother, you're a hypocrite. That's what it says in, in um, the, the epistles of, of John. And the same way, if you say you honor me, but yet you don't show honor to your parents, the bridge, I'm, I'm, bring, I'm, I'm building a bridge for you here. The Sabbath is a commandment of honor, of showing honor to God. And yet it, you could say that you keep the Sabbath commandment, but if you're not honoring your parents, if, if you can't build this bridge, then there's a disconnect. 
there's a disconnect in your relationship with me. All authority belongs to God. He instituted, he brought the family together. It was created from the beginning. All this family structure was created by God. It's one of the few things we have left from before the fall of Adam and Eve. He said, be fruitful and multiply. The family structure was always meant to be. And so this structure, because God created it, it's to be honored. It is to be respected. There is a, to be a, a heaviness of, of, of thought and understanding about it. We are to set it at a very high value. Honor your father and your mother. When we do so, we are showing an honor and a respect towards the Lord God. It's a bridge. It's a bridge that, that draws us closer to him. I want to move to the next step in this because I want to look at Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 16. And, that, and that's, we're looking at the same commandment. It's still, we're still looking at the Ten Commandments. But now what we're looking at here is we're looking at the Ten Commandments in, in, in the context of the children of Israel who have walked 40 years through the desert. Some have died. Some were children when it started. And some are now adults. Some were children learning to honor their parents, and now their parents being honored by their children, hopefully. And, and this is the way that the commandment is worded here. And there's a little more nuance to it. And we're going to compare and contrast a little bit. It says, Deuteronomy 5.16, you see it on the screen. It says, honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God commanded you. So re remember, that happened on Sinai. Just as the Lord commanded you, honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long and that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. If we go back to Exodus 20, 12, it says that your days may be long upon the, upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Now we have something added. Your days may be long, and it may be well with you in the land. So not only living a long life, but living a good life. It's talking about an aspect of, of what it means, what the result is of, of honoring parents, of honoring mother and father. When it talks about this, sometimes we think of the aspect of, of uh, so are you saying that, the way that I, that I treat my parents is going to be directly related to how long that I live? Well, I'm, I'm not saying that necessarily. But what I am saying and what this verse is saying is there's a quality of life that goes right along with the way that we interact with those who brought us in to the world. Because what happens is as we, as we look to them a certain way, we also look to God in that same way. So the question we need to ask ourselves is, are things well with us? Are things well within our community? Because this commandment could be e extended a little bit to those that are, that are like fathers and mothers to us, those that have, have come along and those that have mentored us along the way. They should be shown honor as well. Those individuals should be taken into a place within our, our hearts and in our existence where we, we seek them out for advice, seek them out for counsel, seek them out for things that will help us to, to grow and to be in relationship with them, that will help us to live a better life because it's not just about us showing honor, it's about absorbing the knowledge, absorbing the love, absorbing all the things that these individuals, specifically our parents, have for us us to obtain. You know, it's, it's interesting that as we give authority and as we give, as we surrender sometimes, sometimes it just takes surrender, as we surrender ourselves, and, and, and I'm speaking now to, to a, a, adult children for the most part, as we surrender ourselves to our, our parents and their, and their will, there's, there's something that will, uh, there, there, there's a peace that sets about within our being. 
And again, the title of this message is The Bridge. So what we're doing here, we're doing two different things here. We're bridging the commandments, of, the commandments pertaining to God to the commandments pertaining to man. But we're also bridging our relationship with God to our relationship with our fellow human beings. There's a bridge that's happening here. And it's God's desire for us to, to live well. Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, I came that they may have life and have it to the full. Have it in abundance. And part of the way we have that abundant life is by looking at these commandments. Specifically this bridge commandment which gives us a promise and moving forward with that. In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1, I'm going to look at verses 1 through 3. And I want to stay here for a moment because there's something that is found in this text that we uh, don't see in the other text of scriptures. It, it's implied there, but here the Apostle Paul says it explicitly. Here's what it says, Ephesians 6, 1 through 3, children... Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. I mentioned earlier, he makes it right, clear right off the bat. I'm talking about obedience. Children, obey your parents. And then he says, honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. So there we see at the end, we see that aspect of it found in the book of Deuteronomy. But here now, what we also see is, is that he's telling us that this is a commandment given to us with promise. What does it mean to have a promise from God? You know, God makes covenants throughout the Bible. And we can think of this promise as a covenant. It's, it's not just something that God is just arbitrarily saying, but it's something that is said in order to link us closer to God. When he made a covenant with Noah, with the rainbow, he made a covenant with Noah and the earth that he would never again destroy the earth by flood. What he was doing was he was attaching himself to, to Noah and his descendants, uh, including us, that he would never, ever do that again. The covenant of blood was made through Jesus Christ on the cross. And through that covenant, we have relationship with God in ways that we can never have had relationship with him apart from Jesus Christ. So we see that when God makes a promise, it's something that brings us into a tighter knit relationship with him. And that is why it is important for us to understand this, this commandment it, as, as a bridge commandment that, that pulls us into another uh, dimension, if you will, as far as our relationship with God goes. I know that you know, perhaps some of us um, uh, are not in a position to look at this. Some of us are parents. Some of us um, don't. Um, uh, parents are resting. Some of us uh, are, are in different situations. But what I want us to understand about this commandment that applies to all of us is this aspect of a promise. Because whether or not we look at this aspect of, of uh, honoring our, our father and mother, if, it, if we say, oh, it applies to me, it may not apply to me. What we can see is that God makes promises to us and he keeps those promises. Because what happens is if we look at our society today, if we have a society, a place where the, the, the home structure is in place, we see that things will move in a, in a positive direction. But if the structure in the home is, is broken down in, in any way, and sometimes it's not the fault of what happens in the home, it's the fault of other things, but if we see that happening, we see things moving in a negative direction. So God is saying we should do all that we can to keep that structure in place 
And the part that we can play is to honor our parents, to, to bring them as close to us as possible. Friends, as we look at this command today, I could have gone on about honoring parents, but what I wanted to talk about today was this aspect of a bridge. This aspect of what it means to be bridged to God. I really like this, this illustration of this individual just standing on the bridge, looking forward, looking ahead at what comes next. And that's the way we should see this commandment. As we honor God, we can look ahead to know that he will have his promises that we could stand upon. As we look ahead on this bridge, we can know that as we have honored God, we can now look forward to the next step or the next level, and that is our relationship with one another. Next week, we're going to look at the sixth commandment. And we're going to continue on with this aspect of the bridge. This bridge is now an, an idea that we need to take with us into the, the, the commandments going all the way to the tenth commandment. Because this, this is a bridging one, but, but it bridges us into relationship with one another. And it is my hope and prayer that as we have looked at this commandment today briefly, that we would bridge ourselves to one another, that we would bridge ourselves to our, our parents, that we, in doing so, would bridge ourselves to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who wants nothing more than to be in close relationship with you and to keep his promises to us. May we stand on this promise that if we honor our father and our mother, our days will be long in the land that the Lord has given to us. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we are just so grateful today for the opportunity we've had to open up your word and to study. Lord, we thank you for this commandment, this bridge commandment that brings us into closer relationship with you and one another. Lord, as we look at it, may we not be one-dimensional about it and just see it as an aspect of we need to obey our parents, but may we see the power in what you are asking us to do and, and the, result of, of, uh, the result that happens as we follow your command. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus for the blood that he shed on Calvary. Thank you for that, that promise was kept as it was made back in the book of Genesis. And may we stand on this promise and may our days be long and may we look forward to the days of being well before us and may we look forward to the day when we dwell in your kingdom physically. Oh Lord Jesus, come quickly. That is our prayer in his name. Amen. May God bless you. Let us all stand. Him and always standing on the promises. <clears throat> Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal wages let His praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises that cannot fail When the holy storms of doubt and fear as hell By the living word of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God
may be seated. Imagine being able to reach the whole world with the gospel. Adventist World Radio, AWR, is a media ministry of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. It has been broadcasting the good news to the world for more than 50 years. With more than 1,000 radio stations and local studios worldwide, cell phone evangelism, apps, podcasts, health messages, and internet-based outreach, AWR currently broadcasts in more than 100 languages. Plans are underway to prepare evangelistic sermons and health presentations in more than 500 languages and dialects so that every person on the planet can listen to Bible-based messages in their own language. You may be surprised to learn that radio is still the primary source of communication for most of the world. It knows no borders and can penetrate homes and hearts where missionaries cannot enter. One major target of Adventist World Radio's broadcasts is the 1040 window, comprising parts of North Africa, the Middle East, and Asia. Areas currently closed to the gospel message, but easily reached by radio. In 2020, AWR's Unlocking Bible Prophecies and Earth's Final Countdown series received millions of plays in dozens of languages. Many of them are among the top results when people search for Bible prophecy topics. Every day, AWR receives emails, letters, and messages from around the world. Like this, the Unlocking Bible Prophecies series is transforming my family. I was raised Baptist and attended church on Sunday. So I've been so blessed to learn of the Sabbath and will be attending my first in-person Adventist church service this weekend. If you distribute your offerings according to the combined offering plan suggestion, 50 to 60% of your offerings will support your local church. 20 to 30% will maintain regional missionary projects, usually sponsored by your conference and union. The remaining 20% will go to the World Missionary Fund or World Budget. This World Missionary Fund supports all missionary projects sponsored by the General Conference, including the AWR. But if in addition to your promise offering, you are impressed to send a special offering to the AWR, you may specify AWR in your tithe and offering envelope or access awr.org support, choosing one of the options to give. As you return your tithes and offerings, you are also obeying Jesus' mandate which is to go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. May we put our desires last and God first. Hi. As the, as the video said, we can um, donate to AWR or World Budget, but now is the time for our tithes and offerings. You can give by um, the envelopes we have. Um, you can designate on there what you would like to um, donate for, for tithe offerings, for world budget, church budget. and um, Or you can also give online um, to Adventist, AdventistGiving.org. Um, and also you can mail it to our address here at 1655 Street, Concord, California, 94521 if you'd like to. So anyway, with that, um, let me say a prayer. So, dear Lord, thank you again for the Sabbath, and thank you again for the chance to share with you our blessings that you've given us in returning our tithes and offerings, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, the, um, the deacons, please come forward. Thank you.
I will dismiss you with the blessing from Jude, the brother of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Happy Sabbath. Shalom. Go in peace.